Today, I'm going to dive into the worst of TikTok and discover why TikTok believes 401ks are garbage. Watch this video all the way through to see what wealthy people think about 401ks and another option that is way better. I love how he immediately sets this one up to be like, oh yeah, the 401ks are actually trash in the eyes of the rich because they have a better option. Now, here's the deal. Rich people love 401ks. Rich people love 401ks because it's a pre-tax account. While you're working and building wealth, rich people are typically in a very high tax bracket, meaning tax breaks right now are fantastic. Once you retire and you're not working, your income tax bracket plummets completely Hindenburgs. And then when you withdraw money from your 401k, you'll pay taxes, income taxes, then at a lower rate. But above the match, I wouldn't put in my 401k anymore. I would put that into cash value life insurance because I want to be in control. I want to have tax free income and retirement. And I love it. I love it. Why don't we take your money and get a third party in the room to take more of your money from your return? Remember, insurance companies are for profit. They're making money off of your money. Unless you're making millions upon millions of dollars a year, unless you're ludicrously rich. And if you are, talk to a CPA. If you're not, this is garbage. You are a regular person. And so you should be thinking about how do regular people make money? That 401k and that IRA, those are going to be like chains around people's necks. They're going to regret that they put as much money in those products as they did. The only 401k regrets I've personally heard is people regretting not starting sooner. So the number one reason you should stop funding your 401k if you're in your 50s or 60s is because you can lose money. You can lose money in your portfolio that you can't afford to at this phase of your life. This is a classic, classic move where you say something that's kind of true and then you twist it hardcore into something that's downright manipulative. A 401k does not have a rate of return. They are an investment account. You get tax advantages and restrictions on the investments inside of them. What those investments do has to do with the investment. So he is correct in saying as you approach retirement, you should be in more conservative investments because if a recession hits, you don't want an 100% stock portfolio. If your portfolio drops 30%, you might have to keep working because you don't have the money to retire at that time. And you don't want to start living off those assets when they have a low value. However, you can adjust for that. And even if you don't want to do it yourself, if you have a target retirement fund, it will do that for you automatically. As you approach the year you're going to retire, the year the fund's based on, it gets more conservative for you. You have a lot of control over how aggressive and volatile your 401k investments are. Just change them if they're too aggressive or if they're too passive and you need more growth and you're in a position to take on additional volatility, you can change them. You have a lot of control here. Number two, you just keep digging your tax hole deeper and deeper. What do you mean by digging your tax hole deeper? The income taxes you'd pay on the money you put into a 401k is being postponed. If you're nearing retirement, you're probably at the best salary you've ever made. You're very late in your career. So you're probably in the highest tax bracket you're going to be. Once you retire, your income tax bracket typically plummets because you're not working anymore. Then when you go to withdraw money from the 401k, you're getting that lower tax bracket. If you didn't put money into the 401k near the end of your working career, you're probably getting taxed at the highest income tax bracket you're going to run into during your career. I don't, I don't, you can't just state, you can't just state that you're going to increase your future tax burden without the context of if you pay your taxes right now, you're probably going to pay even more. Oh my goodness, my goodness. And number three, because of your age, you've adjusted your holdings so conservatively that even in up markets, you're barely going to make any money anyways. <sighs> okay. You can't list that reason number one on your three reason list to not invest in the 401k is that 401ks are too aggressive while simultaneously reason number three is they're too conservative. You understand the problem. You understand the problem of saying it's too aggressive and it's too conservative. You can have an issue for 401k where it's too aggressive or too conservative, but like Goldilocks, you can also make it just right.
Here's what you should consider doing with your money instead. Put your money into something that grows when the market goes up and hold steady when the market declines. So here's what you need. Here's what you need. It's so easy, guys. So easy. Just find something that grows really well with no risk. AK, the holy grail of all investments. Somehow you're going to make a bunch of money and you can't lose money. There's always a catch. And usually it's an annuity and the catch is high fees for the record. And a bunch of your growth getting taken away from you because the insurance company wants money. That's usually where this garbage goes. Number two, you should invest in something that grows tax-free. Here's the thing about tax-free investments. Because it's offering the perk of being tax-free, like municipal bonds, it offers a lower rate of return than taxable bonds. You do not get benefits in the world of finance without significant downsides. So if you're in a low tax bracket, paying the taxes on a taxable investment might be yielding you ultimately a better rate of return than buying something with a lower rate of return that's tax-free. It depends on your situation. Tax-free is not good for a lot of people. And number three, put your money into something where you can still fully expect to make between 7 and 11% returns in spite of your age and your conservative stance. For the record, the S&P 500 is a pretty volatile investment. It's a full stock index, and it has historically returned about 10%. So where are you going to get a 7 to 11% average return based on historical performance that's zero risk? I'm talking about cash value life insurance. And Mother, no, it's always. <sighs> okay, breathe. Become the Buddha. How you know cash value life insurance is probably not suitable to you is that this guy is over promising to such an insane degree it raises a ton of red flags, tons of them. This is pain. For most people, the only life insurance you will ever need is a term life insurance policy to cover your dependents while you're building wealth, like paying off the house, funding kids' college, etc. Beyond that, life insurance is pretty useless. The vast majority of people will not need more than just simple term life insurance. Insurance companies are the worst casino of all time. First, the odds are against you. They have to make some money off of you. So they've calculated out odds that give the house the favor. In this case, the house is the insurance company. Additionally, when it comes to getting money from insurance policies, typically, you're only going to get it when tragic things happen. You die. Your loved ones die. Your house burns down. Your car gets totaled. Horrible things have to happen for you to get a cash out from the house in which the house has better odds of winning anyways. Insurance sucks. Like, subscribe, all that fun jazz if you appreciated it. And I will see you in the next video.